Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to James M. Stewart Stadium on the campus of Hofstra University in Hempstead, New York, where the Hofstra Pride and the Drexel Dragons will do battle for the 2014 CAA Men's Lacrosse Championship. Hello, everyone. Brian McDonald here alongside Nick Velastro. Thank you for making us a part of your Saturday evening. Now, Nick, it's been a very long season for both Hofstra and Drexel, and they've definitely deserved to beat it at this point. Well, when you're in the finals, you really want it to be the two best teams. Sometimes you get an upset. That is not the case with these two teams. They are the number one and two seeds here in the CA tournament, but because last time these two teams met, you didn't expect them to meet again here in the finals. Hofstra back then won 11 to nine in that one. Hofstra up eight to four at one point. Drexel was able to come back in that one. Uh, Drew Cajon was able to pull away Hofstra to give them the victory and who would have thought at that point that Drexel would be able to go on a seven game win streak after that loss and to really put them 5-1 and one here in the conference 11-4 and four overall and looking at Hofstra after that win they continued a six game win streak and 7-8 and eight overall after they lost to Penn State. Now let's look at the number two seeded Drexel Dragons. They have the number one offense in the CAA coming into this game and they're led by their offensive midfielder Ben McIntosh. Oh Ben Mac McIntosh he's named the CAA player of the year like you said and he's just something phenomenal just the big body he has with 42 goals is something that's so impressive. He's able to will his way into the box and able to do anything that he wants. 127 shots. That leads to CA. He's someone who can do it on his own. He can distribute it off as well. And it's something really special that Drexel has. Now for the number one seeded Hofstra Pride. They have the number one defense in the CAA, but their big explosive power on offense and their offensive general mainly is Sam Linares. And Sam Linares, he leads the way for Hofstra on the offensive side. He helped distribute to Lance Dupour and Torrance. Martin. He is the man with the best eye. Only as a sophomore, he's impressed so well. Was named to the Tour Tarn watch list this year. Was a CA rookie to watch last year. And just in his second year, first team CA this year, he's really stepped leaps and bounds so far. Well, when we come back, we will have first face-off and also the starting lineups for today's 2014 Men's Lacrosse CAA Championship. We'll be back with first half action here on CAA TV. Back here at Stewart Stadium here in Hempstead, New York. Hofstra versus Drexel in the 2014 CAA Championship. The ensuing faceoff is won by Drexel. And that's Nick Saputo. And Drexel will have possession in Hofstra's attack box. Back at X is Nick Trezano for the Dragons. We'll get you starting lineups as soon as we can. As as a starting attack for Hoff, as for Drexel will be Jared Boudreau with Cole Schaefer and Nick Trezano right now as now it's at midfield and covering is John Reichter for the Pride, the junior. Junior short stick defensive midi is now trying to threaten are the Dragons. John Reichter was coming back from injury after suffering a foot injury, came back last game against Delaware, so it's really important for Hofstra to have him back in the lineup. That's Ryan Riley, the long stick defensive midi trying to cause the turnover, but it goes out of bounds. Drexel keeps the possession. You'll probably see Ryan Riley a lot on Ben McIntosh, the offensive mid midfielder, and CAA Player of the Year for the year 2014. He's now passing around, trying to get something going. Are the Dragons starting defense for Hofstra? Close defense is Finn Sullivan, Steven Satterthwaite, and Corey Caputo. Is trying to go past Selva. Selva is able to make the save, and Hofstra will have their first possession as he is able to make a very good save. That one, I believe, on Jules Ru Rucci for the Dragons. Chris now it's going out of bounds here. It's going to be Drexel Ball already. Chris Selva, who made the save there, has a save percentage of just over 60%. That is top five in the nation, so already making a stop here, and Chris Selva obviously going to have to rely on him for Hofstra. Now trying to pass it around as the starting goalkeepers for Drexel and Hofstra. Will Gabrielson for the Dragons, as well as Chris Selva for the Pride. He struggled in the semifinal game, but there weren't a lot of shots on goal. Was able to hold on for the 8-6 victory over Delaware on Wednesday. So we have a little over 13 minutes here to go in the first quarter from Sheward Stadium in the 2014 CAA Championship. Trying to threaten this Drexel right now. He's trying to get to that one for Drexel. So I believe Rucci again. Jared Boudreau actually. And they're just trying to find a lane right now. Threatening at X is Trezano right now for the Dragons. Covering him very quickly is Finn Sullivan causing the turnover it looked like at first was Riley and Hofstra will get possession and Reichardt scoops up the ground ball on the near side in the alley. 
for Hofstra. That's what, what they do best is causing turnovers. It's going to be such a problem when you're talking about a top offense in the Drexel Dragons to be able to go out on attack. But Hofstra has a very good defense as well. So you're having an unstoppable force meets an immovable object. Let's see what wins today. Hofstra starting lineup at attack. Torin Varn, Sam Linares, and Lance Yapor. The only underclassman is Sam Linares. He made the All-CAA first team, as we mentioned in the pregame. And now Hasha will try to take advantage of this possession. Mike Malave having the ball just then. He was the hero in their OT winner in a big game just a few weeks ago against Cornell here at Sheward Stadium. The other uh, starting offensive midfielders, Corey Hendrickson, Drew Kaholin, as well as Mike Malave, respectively. Now having the ball right now is Malave trying to get somewhere here. But Drexel causing a turnover once again. And that one is Matt Dusick, the All-CAA first teamer on defense, bringing it himself. But taking it right away once again is Hofstra on the near side and bringing it back into the Drexel zone is Mike Malave. So causing that was Corey Caputo, the senior close defender. And Hofstra now has possession once again. Linares with the ball, giving it to Torin Varn. And back outside the attack box and Hofstra will reset. For Drexel, who's a good team on the ground ball, talking about that, able to get the ground ball there. But then Hofstra, again, causing the turnover. You're seeing the strength for both teams really showing up here in the first five minutes or so. Koholin giving it to Malave once again. Starting defense for Drexel. Matt Dusick, Tyler Houchins, and Miles Thomas. The defensive middies, Markel Nelson, Jason, and Jordan Clunder. Jason being a captain, as well as Jake Genosa and Matt Clark. Lenaris now for the pride. Still passing it around, trying to find some type of lane going on. Koholin gets a pick set by Varn. Now bad at X is Malave. Trying to find somewhere. He's being covered by Dusik. Still at X is Malave. And Gabrielson already alert, trying to find anything. Linares now trying to find any open lane. Can't even get a shot off. Tries to get a sit, pe pick set by Malave. Is now going in for Hofstra. Once again, just really pounding it right now. Jason Clunder was covering on that one just before. Yapur over to Linares. Big save there by Gabrielson. So Drexel with a huge way to stop that Hofstra possession. Well, Linares here had an opportunity here on the near side. Goes low to low there. But Gabrielson able to go low there and also get the stop there. He's second in the CA when it comes to saves per game and making another save there on Sam Linares. Mason Penn brought it in there for Drexel as the second midfield line is out for the Dragons. That is Mitch Desnew, Mason Penn, and Hank Brown for the Dragons. Under 10 minutes to go, still scoreless here in the 2014 CAA Championship on CAA TV. As Drexel trying to threaten right now. Trying to get something going on, a high shot there by Jared Boudreau goes over the head of Selva, but as well as the head of the cage. And 5-6 Boudreau, the senior, tried to go low to high there, but just sailed it completely over. But Drexel, closest to the ball there as it went out of play, they'll keep it. Hank Brown with the ball now. He is covered. I believe Anthony Sapone. Check that. That's Steve Romano for the pride, the short stick defensive midi. Now trying to get in there is Trezano. Tied for the second leading scorer on the Drexel Dragons right now coming into this game. Boudreau has it again. Just trying to find any type of lane for the number one scoring offense in the CAA. Desnew now with the ball. He's covered by Finn Sullivan. An all CAA first teamer once again. The sophomore from Broxbury, Massachusetts. Playing very heavy defense out of the pride. 8.26 left. Bringing it down and getting that ground ball. Whistle blows though. It's going to stay Drexel ball. Hofstra very aggressive so far on the grill, and you're going to have to do that in the number one scoring team in the Dragons, and Hofstra sticking to their game plan, staying aggressive on their attackers. Boudreau threatening, but he's covered by Sullivan. Now back out. It's this new and now trying to set it up here is Hank Brown. Trying to bring it into the attack box as close as he can. Riley trying to get to him, and now back at X for Chisano. Back around the arc now. 
trying to get anything going for this Drexel Dragon squad. 7.50 left in the first quarter. Still scoreless here at Seward Stadium. Trezano now trying to find anything. Hank Brown gets it again. He's covered by Riley. Can't get a shot off again. Drexel doing anything they can to try and get inside, but Hofstra doing a nice job clogging the middle lanes. Stall warning in effect for the Dragons, but they cause a turnover. Picking that ball up is Finn Sullivan. Showing like he deserves to be on that All-CAA first team. And Hofstra will have possession. Romano now with the ball. Covering him was Mitch DeSnew, but he's going to get off. And the defense immediately will come on for the Dragons. Varn now with the ball for Hofstra. Mike Malave now right at the Hofstra H in the middle of the field. Under seven minutes to go, still scoreless. Malave trying to threaten, goes up for a shot, gets past the cage. It'll stay Hofstra ball. It's the first one back there. Is Yapur. Yapur the senior trying to get anything going once again. He's covered by Matt Dusick. Playing very heavy on him. Back out for Malave and outside the attack box. Having it is Kaholin, the redshirt senior. He's covered by Jordan Clunder. Getting another shot off, trying to get anything on Gabrielson was Torin Varn. But Hofstra will retain possession as back there once again was Lance Kapoor. That's Linares now. Coming him right now, Tyler Houchins, the senior from Green Lane, Pennsylvania. Now Malave here comes back into the attack box with a crank shot from the top of that arc. Hofstra gets on the board first. It's Torin Varn, the senior captain for the offense. Hofstra leads 1 0 with 6.05 left. Make that goal number 29 for the senior in Torin Varn here. This is fed off there by Mike Malave and from the top of the circle. Torn Varn's able to rip one past Gabrielson. And Varn didn't score last game against Delaware, but had two goals when these two teams met earlier this season. So Torn Varn again showing his impressive work as a Hofstra Pride get on the board first. Matt Clark was covering Torin Varn on that play, the six foot junior. Trying to get anything on him, but Varn was able to go from way out for that one. Winning the ensuing faceoff was Nick Saputo. He's top five in the nation in faceoff percentage. Shot, shots for both teams. Drexel with four, Hofstra with two. One of those going in the net for Torin Varn. But Hofstra is able to get the ball back after Saputo made the, won the faceoff. one nothing after a Torin Varn goal, the senior. Starting things up for the pride. Linares now goes over to X. That's Yapur. Now Varn. Looking to threaten to shoot. But now back out. The second midfield line, that's Nick Altman. But the save by Gabrielson. Altman gets the shot there, but not really much of a challenge there for Gabrielson right into the palkit there. As for Drexel, able to clear it, trying to get something here. Back and tie this game, only five minutes remaining in the first quarter. Second save of the game for Will Gabrielson. 6-1 sophomore from Summit, New Jersey. Goals against average under 10 on the season. But now Drexel trying to threaten. Now back at X. Drexel trying to threaten in any way possible. one nothing. less than five minutes left in the first quarter. Just passing around right now. That's Ben McIntosh at the top of the arc. Now going for a shot and score. That one going to Cole Schaefer of the All-CAA rookie team. So this one's tied at 1-1. 4-19 left here in the first quarter. And with that, we will take a break. You are listening to, you're watching the 2014 CAA Men's Lacrosse Championship here on CAA TV.
and Cole Schaefer in 31st of the season. At Hofstra University, discover what pride and purpose is all about. Students who attend the presidential debate here at Hofstra. Just report the details. Find out what's waiting for you by visiting hofstra.edu slash bmore. License and registration, please. What's this? Uh, it's my Geico insurance ID card, sir. It's digital. Uh, pretty cool, right? Maybe. <laughs> you know why I pulled you over today? Because I'm a pig driving a convertible. Tail lights out. Fix it. Digital insurance ID cards. Just a click away with the Geico mobile app. Suit up for the CEO while earning your MBA. The C-Suite Co-op, only at Drexel LeBeau. I'm doing it. For complete coverage of the CAA Men's Lacrosse Championship, including semifinal game recaps, results, and highlights, log on to caasports.com and caa.tv. Welcome back to Hempstead, New York. It's 1-1 between Hofstra and Drexel. Brian MacDonald here alongside Nick Velastro. Thank you for making us a part of your Saturday evening. And Hofstra scoops up the ground ball after the faceoff. That's Steve Romano at that at midfield. And that 1-1, Cole Schaefer able to tie the game, was in the middle, which is something that Drexel hasn't had the opportunity to do. Ben McIntosh able to feed him the ball right in the middle, and Cole Schaefer, all CAA rookie team, really, sh really showed it there. Hofstra with possession. The first midfield is out for Hofstra. Juka Holland giving it to Mike Malave, the junior. Taking a shot already, goes out the right post. That was Malave, and it goes all the way out to the far side for Drexel. They get the ground ball, and they are threatening right away. Goes past Silva and in the net. Drexel scores. That one by Nick Trezano, the all-CAA first-teamer. Drexel takes the lead, less than four minutes to go. And a really unfortunate bounce there for Hofstra. Ball rings off the post, and there in an attack box, goes all the way out past the midfield line, and able on the bounce shot is Nick Trezano to get it past Chris Selva. And just like that, you see why they're the number one offense in the CAA. Nick Trezano, first-team all-CAA, like you said, Brian, gives the Drexel Dragons a two-to-one lead. That's two goals for Drexel in less than a minute. He's down the ensuing faceoff for Saputo and Clark. It goes to Saputo once again. He'll get the ground ball. He's three or four on faceoff so far in this game. Jared Boudreaux with the ball now. Just last game, Nick Saputo is 16 for 24 against Chris Clark, so you, you just understand why he's one of the top faceoff men in the nation. So he took under three minutes to go. It's two to one Drexel after goals by Nick Trezano and Cole Schaefer. 3-1, the faceoffs favor the Dragons. Already a lot of execution. Selva able to make the save on Boudreaux, though. Hofstra will get possession, and on the far side is John Reichter. He was out for over a month with a leg injury. Second save of the day for Chris Selva. Two-one, Drexel. And the first midfield line out once again with Juka Holland with the ball. He was the one that was covering Nick Trezano all the way, trying to get any body on him before he got to the net. On that second goal. Malave now going down the near side alley. Hofstra coming off the win against Fort C to Delaware. Before that, they had lost their first CAA game to Penn State in the final regular season game of the season. 8-7 loss there. Now Malave trying to threaten for Drexel. Plenty of action going on inside. Still 2-1 Drexel. Malave now on the near side. He finds an open lane. Gets past Gabrielson, but doesn't hit anything 
on the net. Now going for it is Linares. Hofstra will keep possession. Covering him is Tyler Houchins for the Dragons. So Houchins putting a lot of pressure on Linares right now. But still able to work at X. Tries to dodge pass him. And they'll reset. Hofstra right now really having a difficult time trying to get inside as Drexel being very staunch so far in the middle, really clogging it up there. And the attackman for Hofstra really finding it a difficult time. Corey Hendrickson now with the ball, the redshirt junior. Now with a quick stick, one timer and a goal. Hofstra ties this game up. It's Lance Yapor with his first goal on the game. Lance Yapor trying to make sure he wasn't in the crease there. Gets the feed over from Corey Hendrickson, able to find him right on the doorstep, and a wide open cage there for Lance Yaport to be able to put that home. That is number 14 for him on the season. Scored last game against that where he had one goal. So Hofstra able to respond right back quickly with time running out here in the first quarter. Credit the assist to the midfielder Corey Hendrickson after that Lance Yaport goal. It's 2 2 with 107 left here in the first quarter. Brian McDonald here alongside Nick Velasco. Thank you for making us a part of your Saturday evening here on CAA TV. Hofstra wins the ensuing faceoff. That's Chris Clark. That's his second faceoff that he's won as opposed to Sapiro's three. Riketer now brings it in for Hofstra and now coming up with it is Lance Yapur who just scored the recent goal. So Hofstra trying to keep that possession, keep that ball away from Drexel knowing what they can do with their offense, the very high-powered offense. The Drexel team able to outscore Albany, who has the Thompson Trio, 14 to 13 in a victory early this season. So that just shows you how good this offense can be for the Dragons. Second midfield is out for Hofstra. That is made up of Nick Altman, Tyler Begley, and Brian Von Bargen. Hofstra just trying to get anything going. Lenars with the ball now, trying to get him was Jordan Clunder. Trying to dodge past him though, and Houchins playing it very cleanly. Drexel's defense doing a very good job so far despite the two goals. Less than 10 seconds left here in the first quarter though with a wraparound shot though is missed. Actually hits the left post. And going over it for a long goal. Going past Selva, but time expires. But flag flies after a huge hit on a Drexel player. That one is Jared Boudreau. And we'll check that call as soon as we can see who had that. We'll look at that as soon as possible, but Drexel will be on the EMO. Let's look at the replay to see what happened here. Before that, getting him, that was Chris Selva, actually, the goalie, body checking him. We'll be back with talk more about this for second quarter action here on CAA TV. Keep up with the CAA while you are on the move by downloading the league's apps available for iPhone, Android, and iPad in your respective app store. Each app features all the news from around the league, including stats, standings, scores, and more. Welcome back here to Sheward Stadium. Hofstra and Drexler are tied at two, but Drexel will be on the EMO because of a Chris Selva with a cross check on Jared Boudreau. He goes to the box. Eddie Collins has to come in, the backup goalie, to play goalie for now. Really an unnecessary move from Chris Selva. Time's winding down in the quarter. No need to go out for the cross check, and now you have the top EMO team in the conference and Drexel out there. Hofstra's man up, man down unit is out on the field, including Jack Moorhead, as well as the regular defenseman. Now Ben McIntosh will let one rip. Saved though by Eddie Collins. He's able to scoop up the ground ball. And obviously, and honestly, possibly makes the biggest save of his career at that point there, Nick. He still has the ball. He's being chased by a Drexel defenseman, but he's able to clear it out on the far side. Collins is fired up after that one. Shot goes right off the shaft of his stick, and he's able to scoop it up after the ball is on the ground. But nice opportunity there for Hofstra to be able to clear this one out on the man down unit. Less than 15 seconds left, left on the EMO to Selva. 10 seconds now for him. Still man down is Hofstra. But Eddie Collins making a fantastic save on the other side of the field for the Pride. And this is still tied 2-2 and coming out. Not coming out, not yet for now, but still Selva still down there waiting for a good time to go with Collins. But still on the other side now. Hofstra's often trying to get anything going. Selva will run back to his goal. 
and Collins will come out. Huge save for him, and a huge save on the man down unit for Hofstra. But Drexel gets back the possession. That one right there going to Miles Thomas, the sophomore from Devon, Pennsylvania, coming up with the ground ball. Whistle blows. Timeout will be called by Brian Volker of Drexel, the coach. And so Hofstra right now, that was really a nice opportunity there. You already face a man down opportunity, a man up for Drexel. And Eddie Collins is able to make the stop there right away. And you, that was really, you saw how fired up he was after making that stop. And Hofstra just able to clear it and milk the time off of that one. So it's really a crisis averted for the pride. Definitely a huge one, but still looking overall. Look at the goalies overall. Will Gabrielson comes in 11-3, and three, less than 10 goals given up a game. 533 save percentage. As far as Chris Selva goes, he had a stellar first year in goal last season. He's still been doing well. He's got the best goals against average in the CAA. His save percentage just a little bit over 500 as well, but it certainly is a pretty even matchup here, Nick. It really is. Chris Selva was named all CAA second team, but Will Gabrielson, all CAA academic team, but he's still a very good goalie to have for you in Drexel. And for right now, it's going to come down to the goalkeepers. Hofstra, they're not as high octane offensively as it is for Drexel, but they can still able to put up points. And for Gabrielson and for Chris Selva, it's a matter of Selva for this matter. Can you hold and contain McIntosh and all the other offense that this Drexel Dragons will put out at you? Gabriel Sin giving up two goals already. Four saves for him. Chris Selva, two saves respectively so far in this game, as well as Eddie Collins, the backup goalie, with one save when they were man down. Two to two, 329 left in the second quarter. Sasha and Jexler are doing battle in the 2014 CAA Men's Lacrosse Championship here on CAA TV. Drexel with possession. McIntosh giving it over to Jules Rucci. And now Ryan Belka comes in. He was the hero in the semifinal. He has scored the OT winner against Towson just Thursday afternoon. Now coming in is Cole Schaefer. But picking up the ground ball is Selva after he was hit. Someone caused a turnover for Hofstra. Still trying to clear here. Romano will make it go over the midfield and bring it into Drexel zone. Clear for number four, Steve Romano. As we take under 13 minutes left to go in the first half. Turnover numbers right now. Drexel with five, Hofstra with three. Both teams trying to keep that number as low as possible in order to keep that possession. It's so now on the right side now. Hofstra trying to get anything going on right now. Try to take this lead here. The first midfield is on for the pride. Being covered right now was Yapor. Check that out, it was Kaholin. So just trying to find any lane as possible. A dodge going in front of the crease. I don't even know if the ball got to Gabrielson, but he's able to pick up the ground ball. And either way, Drexel's got possession now. They're going right to left. They're going to ride this. Didn't really look like they're, like you said, Brian, didn't really look like they got the shot on that defense for Drexel. Just swarmed into him, making sure that you didn't get any clear opportunity there, and Drexel doing a nice job. Shot on goal, gets tipped in front. So we'll go for the replay from that initial shot. Does, doesn't even look like it actually might have hit in front. Tyler Houchins, who's been mainly covering Sam Linares so far in this game, but still did not really seem if it got to the net. And of course, for Drexel, you want to keep an eye on Sam Linares. He is the playmaker. He is the maestro of this team for Hofstra on the attack side. And it's always going to be difficult to try and stop him. And now letting it rip at that point was Ryan Belka. But a save there by Selva. That's his third of the game. Although Hofstra might not be able to clear. They don't. They never get it with the midfield. And they're able to take it back. Drexel with possession. Tries to make, let it rip. Goes off the top post. Either way, it will still stay Drexel ball as Nick Trezano was there to get it back. Just rang that one off the post. But was Cole Schaefer there? Had a nice opportunity here. Probably a little too tight of an angle to try and score there, but rings off the near post here, and Drexel is still able to keep it. Jules Rucci now at that point trying to get there. The shot's on goal. Hofstra leads 7-6 to six at this point. Drexel with possession still. Calling up the duties on defense is head coach Seth Tierney, as you just heard. Now Ryan Belka trying to get it over in front for a quick stick one-timer, but cannot connect. 
but they're able to get the ground ball once again. That one right there, Cole Schaefer with the ball once again in the alley. And Drexel will reset. McIntosh now up to Ryan Belka. He's covered by Reichter. Check that, it's Sapone coming in. And now quick stick one-timer in front and it's a goal. Cole Schaefer at point blank in front of Selva. Beautiful pass to him. He connects, Drexel takes the lead. Cole Schaefer just wide open here on the near side. You see the pass open to the top. It's Ben McIntosh again. He's able to find another assist. And it's again the all CAA rookie member, Cole Schaefer, able to fire another goal. Again, he had four goals last game and in this game. Hofstra had earlier this year, had two goals and an assist. And you see why he's been so impressive only as a freshman. That's the second goal of the game. The assist going to Ben McIntosh. That's his second in the game as well. Now Clark and Saputo for the ensuing faceoff with 10.26 left in the second quarter. Faceoff violation by Saputo. And Hofstra will have possession. 3-2, to two, Hofstra trails Drexel. Now going in front, trying to dive for it. Looks like that one was Lancia Port, but it's a crease violation. 3-3 three, three go the faceoffs for Saputo and Clark. One of those being a violation just recently on Saputo from Drexel. But the crease violation there on Lancia Poor on a missed shot opportunity results in Drexel with possession. Now Jules Rucci brings it in. It's still the first midfield here for the Dragons. Coming up with it right now is Ryan Belka. And now Rucci. Covered by John Riker, the short stick defensive midi, out for most of the season with a leg injury. And now Ben McIntosh with it. On the left side of Selva. Trezano goes back over to Rucci. Still covered by Riker. He loses the ball. Trying to get to it. Riker able to almost to cause a turnover. Tries to ride that, but able to scoop it back up was Riker. Whistle blows. Push is going to be called on Riker. And Drexel will keep possession. And Riker all over. Joe's Rucci right now just making sure that he's not able to get any free opportunities there. Joe, uh, John Reichert really was missed by this Hofstra team when he was out with that foot injury. McIntosh tries to crank one, but it gets deflected right off of his shaft right away. And it goes to Hofstra on the right side. Hofstra's able to clear it. Timeout will be called by head coach Timeout. Seth Tierney. Interesting story between head coach Seth Tierney for Hofstra as well as Brian Volker. These two actually played on the same team from 1988 to 1991. Tierney being a captain on offense, being an offensive midfielder, as well as being the defensive captain was Brian Volker. He was a close defenseman. They were also college roommates for four years as well. So this is, this is definitely something huge as far as something beyond the game here, Nick. It really is. You, didn't, you also forgot to mention that Tierney was Volker's groomsman at his <laughs> wedding. So you're talking about people, who, two guys who are really close together. So they really know each other. And you see completely opposite games. Drexel with the high octane offense. Hofstra, it's all about the defense. They're making sure that it's defense first, controlling possession on the game, while for Drexel, it's making sure of attacking, attacking, attacking. Now let's check out the season series as far as these two, these two teams go. The last time that they met was late March, back down at the Drexel campus. Hofstra won 11-9 just only by two goals, a very close one throughout. But the big thing was Juka Hole, and he had a huge game from the offensive midfield. Five goals for him, a career high for him as well. And he's definitely making very well out of his senior year, especially with that. He brings a lot of depth to that midfield, too. He really does. And in that game alone, he had three unanswered in the fourth quarter to give Hofstra an 11-8 lead after Drexel came back from down 8-4. to four. Just that game alone, the junior class here at Hofstra, they never beat Drexel, so it was something that was very important for them to beat. And it's something that was very key. It was the inaugural foundation here, but something that means a lot to both teams right. when it comes to winning that one. And for both teams, you understand that they knew they were going to meet again sometime this season. The Headstrong Foundation, definitely huge for both of these teams. Actually, Hofstra honoring Nick Calalori with the number 27, and currently wearing that as the defensive captain for the Pride. That's a short stick defensive midi, Anthony Zapone wearing 27. But Hofstra with possession now on offense, as it's 3-2 Drexel here on CAA TV in the 2014 CAA Men's Lacrosse Championship between the Dragons and the Pride. Eight and a half minutes to go here in the second quarter. Having the ball right now is Sam Linares, the sophomore, trying to find any lane, trying to find someone open. Bringing it out, trying to reset. Now it's Caholan, the one with five goals in the last meeting against Drexel. See if he can try to 
remake that situation right here. Hofstra. Now Matt Dusick struggling here. Looks like that's your pour out there for him. And now back here to Corey Hendrickson. Gets a huge hit on him. But Hendrickson is able to regroup. Going for the open shot and going past Gabrielson. It's a goal. That one by Juka Holland. That's his first goal of the game. Less than eight minutes to go. They tie this one back up three to three. Kaholan with five goals in the last game. Trying to recalculate that. Yeah, we were just talking about the work that he did against Drexel this last game. It was sleeping on defense by Drexel. The Drew Kaholan left open wide in the middle. There's no one near him there. And he's left wide open to an easy fire. That one, a low shot from Drew Kaholan. And it's an easy goal for Hofstra. It ties this game at three. Markel Nelson might have missed a slide on that as well, Nick. As the flag has flown on the faceoff, and it will be Hofstra possession. Saputo with another faceoff violation. He went 19 for 22 in the game against Towson at the faceoff X, showing why he's the best faceoff man in the CAA. Granted, it is arguable considering when you see the play of Tyler Barberich for Delaware as well. And Tyler Barberich, who was not, he was hurt. For the, for the Delaware Fighting Blue Hens in that game. It was a big loss for the Delaware in that game. And Hofstra, Chris Clark, he's from Chaminade here locally, a, a well-known school when it comes to lacrosse. And as a freshman, you hope he only grows. And he was all CA rookie this team. So you hope that one day he could be just like Nick Saputo. Hofstra on the EMO, a crank shot from outside is saved by Gabrielson. They're still trying to fight for it. It's a yard sale right in front of the goal. But Gabrielson's able to come up with it. The EMO... Actually, for Hofstra, Jared Boudreau was called with the penalty. And there, as there was a 30-second penalty, and with less than three seconds, he will come out of the box, and we will be at even strength again. So Hofstra can't connect on the man up. As Drexel now has possession in Hofstra's zone. And they will reset and try to pass it around a little bit. The first midfield still on for Drexel. It's Ryan Belka with the ball right now. The junior from Crofton, Maryland. Stat line's really even right now. Shots favoring Hofstra, just 13 to 12 shots on goal. It's 10 to 7 in favor of Hofstra. Looking down the line, very split between these two teams. And now Cole Schaefer. Back over to Belka and now to Rucci. Rucci covered by Romano. And now over once again to Schaefer. They're just going right around with it, trying to find an open man. But here comes Belka. He's met by two Hofstra defenders, but is able to get out of it. McIntosh now finds an open man. Goes off the, looks like the foot of Selva, but it kicks back out to Drexel in one of the sticks. So Drexel keeps possession. Nick Trezano was goal line extended here on the near side, able to fire it low. But like you said, Chris Selva able to get a foot on that one and ricochet that at one out. But Drexel still able to hold on, trying to score. Belka now over to Nick Trezano, an all-CA first teamer from East Chester, New York. Trezano being covered by Anthony Sapone. Now a crank shot right in front of us, right outside. Is saved by Selva once again. And that is his fifth save of the game. Shots favor Drexel 14 to 13 right now. Drexel has had some very good offensive possessions as of late. Hofstra now with possession though right now. 3-3 as we're under six minutes to go here in the second quarter. Hofstra versus Drexel in the 2014 CAA Men's Lacrosse Championship. Brian McDonald here alongside Nick Velastro. Thank you for making us a part of your Saturday evening on CAA TV here on CAAsports.com. Hofstra trying to get anything going right now. And now bring it over to Kaholan on the right of that arc. At first, almost being met by two Drexel defenders, but covering him right now is Miles Thomas. And now it's Linares being covered by Houchins as the man-to-man -man going on right now for Drexel on this defense. Drexel really doing a good job in shutting down Linares. Still does not have a point today. Linares, known as the offensive general, more of an assist man. He leads the CAA in assists. And now they bring it back out, trying to find any type of lane as he gets past the defender. But Gabrielson able to do a split right there, and he's able to make that save. Very huge there for Drexel. 
as it seemed like it was point blank right there for Hofstra. And just looking out the bench, that was Mike Malave who got the shot off. He's frustrated as he put out the nice spin shot there to able to get to the doorstep. And Will Gabrielson was able to shut him down and make sure this game stayed tied. Eighth save of the game for Gabrielson. And now Drexel with possession right now. Flag flies. And Belka giving over to McIntosh. Crank shot. It's deflected in front, but it gets over to Trezano. Doesn't even go out of bounds. Now Schaefer over to Mac over to Rucci. Back over to McIntosh. He's been covered by Ryan Riley all game. Still able to be get two assists so far in this game. Less than four minutes to go in the second quarter. Trezano being met by Finn Sullivan. Still just trying to go around with it. Flag is still on the ground. It looks like Drexel will still have an EMO after that. Belka trying to get a shot off. Goes over to the right side of Selva and goes out of bounds. But they're still able to, but Drexel still able to get to the end line first. Cole Schaefer was the one there. So the EMO, EMO will go for a Drexel, and that'll be Anthony Zappone going to the box. We will be back after this commercial break. It's Hofstra 3, Drexel 3. You are watching the Men's Lacrosse Championship right here on CAA TV. Tag your tweets, posts, and pictures about all the CAA Championship action with the official CAA Champs hashtag. After you tag it, then check out the official tag board of the CAA Championships by logging on to tagboard.com backslash CAA Champs. Drexel 3, Hofstra 3. And Drexel's on the EMO right now after a penalty was called on Anthony Zappone. And gameplay will restart. Drexel's 0 for 1 on the EMO right now with one shot on goal. And that was after Chris Sullivan was called for cross-checking. McIntosh trying to get something off right there, but he's met right away by Sullivan. And now Belka back over to McIntosh trying to just find the open man, trying to get that good shot off before the EMO expires. Less than 10 seconds left in the EMO. Some good passing and they able to get a goal. Drexel takes the lead. It's Nick Trezano. 4-3 to three, Drexel over Hofstra with less than three minutes to go as they convert on the extra man opportunity. Well, for Nick Trezano, make that eight EMO goals for him on the season now. And for Hofstra, you're fortunate not, they, weren't to, they weren't able to score on their first extra man opportunity. Now on their second one, they are they do what they do best. This is why they are number one in the, na in the, con in the, count, in the conference when it comes to extra man opportunities there. And Nick Trezano able to fire that one into his second of the game. And Hofstra down four to three now. Another tidbit for that. McIntosh passing that to him right away. That was a very good pass for him. His third assist already on this game. Riding it right now are both teams. Goes out of bounds. Whistle blows. Refs will meet. It will be Hofstra ball as it goes out of bounds. So taking it right now will be Corey Hendrickson for the pride. 4-3, to three, Drexel leads, less than three minutes to go. The faceoff will be credited to Chris Clark. He's 5-for-8 on the day, as opposed to Saputo's 3-for-8. After a couple of faceoff violations, actually, by Saputo as well. First midfield still on for Hofstra. They're just passing it around right now. About to tick under two minutes to go. Drexel still up by one. Right now, it's Lancia Poor with the ball. He had a goal already in this game. As they're bringing it out again. Back to Hendrickson. Tries to dodge bright past, but loses the ball. Trying to get that ground ball, though. Drexel can't convert. And Hofstra will pick it back up again. Going for a shot. Goes past Gabrielson. Getting to the end line first. Was Hofstra. Malavi was able to make that shot. And trying to threaten once again are the pride. Going for a shot once again. Goes right into the chest of Gabrielson once again. That will be the ninth save of the night for Will Gabrielson. Torn Varn just fired that right. It was an open space where Torn Varn just fires it right at Gabrielson. An easy save there for him. And Torn Varn wishing he had that one back as he had the opportunity there to tie this one. So Drexel being able to clear it right there. They're still up four to three. Little over a minute left. They're trying to get, a get, trying to get one more goal before halftime. 
Drexel is definitely in a good position to get that right now. They still got their first midfield on. It's McIntosh, Belka, and Rucci out there for them. As long as he, as well as the attackman, Jerry Boudreau, Cole Schaefer, and Nick Trezano. And wanting to pull up a play is head coach Brian Volker as Drexel takes a timeout. And just for Hofstra right now, it's you're looking at that pass opportunity that Drexel gets on the extra man opportunity. They're able to score here. Now you just try to make sure that you're able to hold in for Drexel. They're doing a nice job on their offensive side. It's never going to come easy on the defensive side. And when you're looking at this, it's really, really difficult to see if Hofstra can get anything in these final 54 seconds. But still, so far, looking at Will Gabrielson, he has nine saves on the day right now. And let's just look a little bit at what Gabrielson has done. He's made a lot of point-blank shots right now. With a lot of shots on goal by Hofstra. Right now, the shot percentage, 17 to 16 in favor of Drexel. But most of them going on goal were for Hofstra, 12 to 10. He's been able to make a lot of them as well, especially that one right in the chest for Will Gabrielson. He's been doing huge right now. And he's the reason why Drexel is leading this game. He really is, and probably his biggest save of the night came against Mike Malavi. Mike Malavi, in a single effort, is able to get a couple moves in and get on the doorstep. But Gabrielson stands tall, is able to shut down Mike Malavi. And a really important stop here, as you mentioned some of the numbers here for Will Gabrielson, just the amount of saves that he's able to put up a nine so far on the day. And he's really a big factor as to why Drexel is still able to hold this lead. Gabrielson came into this game with a 540 save percentage and a 9.47 goals against average. 54 seconds on the clock. Drexel with possession. They're up by one over the pride here in the CAA championship. Drexel now still with their first midfield up. Reikerder is covering Ryan Belka. And now over to Cole Schaefer. Covering him is Sullivan. 34 seconds left on the clock. Drexel just passing it around right now. Riker is still meeting now on the right side here. And to him is Jules Rucci with the ball. Tries to spin around Riker. Almost converts and does it successfully. But now to Trezano. Trezano over to Schaefer. Now over to Belka. Pick set for him. He's met by Riker though. Eight seconds left. Time is running out for them. Hofstra scoops up the ground ball. Drexel cannot, cannot get a shot on goal before halftime, and that's how the first half will end. Drexel leads Hofstra 4-3 to three here at Seward Stadium in the CAA Men's Lacrosse Championship right now here, Nick. It's really been a very close game when you're talking about this one. So now when we come back, we will have break down this game a little bit more and also see the CAA postseason awards as well. So Drexel leads 4-3 to three here at halftime at Seward Stadium. You are watching CAA TV. Now third quarter action will start between Hofstra and Drexel here in the CAA Men's Lacrosse Championship. It is won by Nick Saputo and, Hofstra and Drexel will have possession. Boudreaux giving it over already to Nick Trezano and Drexel already executing as much as they can on offense. They will start with their first midfield as it seems like it's always been here with the Dragons, especially with Ben McIntosh. Ben McIntosh with his three assists, known for his goal scoring. Haven't seen it yet, but you don't expect that to be the case for much longer. Ben McIntosh known to be able to be a finisher and put the ball in the back of the net. So Boudreau now with the ball. He was the victim, actually, of an EM, of a penalty from Chris Selva. He actually got cross-checked to the ground by him in the first quarter. Now Boudreaux giving it over to Trezano again. He's going to be covered by Sullivan. And now over to Jules Rucci. He's covered by Reikater, John Reikater, short stick defensive media, the junior for Hofstra. Face dodge at that point. Now at the top of the attack box. Here's McIntosh again. He's covered by Sapone. Oh, he gets right past him, too. Definitely got to look out for McIntosh. He's a very quick, quick CAA play of the year. Drexel now. Here's Belka. Back to McIntosh. Over a minute with no shots on goal for either team. Drexel had possession. Saputo won the faceoff. Able to get the ground ball and retain himself as Belka couldn't get a shot off. But then a behind-the-back goal by Drexel. 
That one is Cole Schaefer, the freshman of the All-CAA rookie team. He puts Drexel up 5-3 to three after a wonderful, wonderful behind-the-back goal. And just looking at this replay alone, Cole Schaefer is able to get the ball here. And look at him just put it behind the back, no look. And Chris Selfa had no chance. That one went top shelf. Give credit to Cole Schaefer. And what a... <laughs> I'm, I'm speechless with that one. That was some impressive work there from Cole Shaver. You understand why he was an all-CA rookie, and you could see how much he was going to progress as the years go on. Cole Schaefer, the rookie out of British Columbia, Canada. Also be a hat-trick for him as well. Drexel gets possession. The face-offs are 6-4 to four in favor of Hofstra. Make that 6-5 after that was won by Saputo. But Hofstra really needing to keep the possession away from Drexel if they have, need any chance in this one because of the high-powered offense that the Drexel Dragons bring with head coach Brian Volker. For this Dragons team, they're just looking for their first CA title. Back in 2008, they had an opportunity to beat Hofstra. That wasn't the case. And Tom Dooley scored 11 seconds into overtime to give Hofstra the CA title. The second midfield is out for Drexel. That shot getting past Selva, but doesn't get on the cage. Drexel at the end line, though. They keep possession. Second midfield is out for Drexel. That's made up of Mitch Desnew, Mason Penn, and Hank Brown. Less than 13 minutes to go. Huge goal by Cole Schaefer behind the back. Puts us at 5-3. to three. That was the first goal of the second half for either team. Hank Brown now with the ball. Now trying to get a shot on goal. The ball goes up in the air. It's able to get to a Drexel player as well anyway. Brown with the ball once again. Trying to cause the turnover in front. Falls down. Hofstra is able to get it cleanly. No flags fly, no whistles blown. Hofstra on the far side. They're able to clear. They'll get their first possession of the second half. Turnover numbers, Drexel with seven, Hofstra with five on the game so far here in the 2014 CAA Championship for men's lacrosse. Brian McDonald here alongside Nick Velastro here on CAA TV. First midfield for Hofstra's out. Mike Malave with the ball right now. Hendrickson back to Malave with the give and go. And Drexel's defense just trying to stop him anyway, led by their all CAA first teamer, Matt Dusick. The senior from Moncton, Maryland. Malave now with the ball, gets past his defender, goes for a shot and scores! The junior Mike Malave cuts the deficit to one goal. Just a little under 11 minutes to go here in the third quarter. 5-4 Drexel now. Mike Malave here is able to sneak in, split the defenders and fire that one. Looked like Will Gaberson was kind of caught off guard there as Malave with the side shot there, able to go top corner and able to beat him. So Hofstra with a much needed response after falling down two goals. That was the largest deficit of the game so far. And Hofstra, a nice response there from Mike Malave. That was Hofstra's first goal in almost 12 minutes of game time. So definitely a confidence booster for the offense. It's 5-4 Drexel after a goal from Mike Malave. So he looked like he got past Mile Thomas pretty easily and got that pretty nice shot on Will Gabrielson as it goes past him. It goes to John Reichardter for Hofstra. He's going to take it himself, goes in front of the crease. It's knocked out of his hands. Hofstra trying to get the ground ball once again. Still fighting for it. Goes out of bounds. Last off Drexel. It'll be Hofstra ball. Faceoff is won by the Pride. And they'll have possession. They're just playing keep away right now with Drexel. They're down by one. Less than 11 minutes to go here in the third. But a spark of life from the junior, Mike Malave. Nice effort there from John Riker to make sure that Hofstra maintained possession. Drexel nearly picked up the ground ball, the loose ball there. But Riker really staying with that one and still causing havoc and making sure that Hofstra kept the ball. He scored after the faceoff in the Delaware game just a few days ago. So the first midfield still out for the Pride. Is dodging around, trying to get a goes around the crease. And that's a goal. Right there for Sam Linares. His first goal of the game. 
the All-CAA first teamer, the leader in assists, but he gets a goal on that way. We're tied here, a little over 10 minutes to go. It's 5-5. Sam Lenores here is able to sneak, go, tries to go behind that next blend, cuts right back, and able to fire that one from such a sharp angle. A flag flew there, but it doesn't really matter. It looks like it was gonna be on Drexel, but Sam Lenores finally gets on the score sheet, and you understand why he's the vital piece. He's the centerpiece of this Hofstra attack. Once again, two goals in less than a minute there for Hofstra. That happened at one point in the first half for Drexel. It happens here now for the Pride. Hofstra will be on the EMO. Brian Volker very upset with the call on his defenseman, Tyler Houchins. Hofstra will be on, be on the EMO. It's a one minute. So the man up unit comes up for Hofstra. The man down unit comes on for Drexel. And Malave now with the ball. Trying to get anything going. Goes for a crank shot, goes past Gabrielson. Hofstra gets there first. Hofstra's 0 for 1 on the EMO so far with only two shots, including that one just now. Malave now. Back over to Linares. Now to Varn. Haven't seen the ball in his hands very much so far in this second half. Now back to Varn. Fix the shot, goes low to low and scores. Hofstra takes the lead from the captain, Torin Varn. That's his second in the game. Hofstra 6-5 to five over the Dragons right now, less than 10 minutes to go. Well, Hofstra, they're second in the conference when it comes to the EMO opportunities, and Torin Varn is able to go five-hole there on the doorstep here near side and able to beat him, fakes it there with the juke move, and then pulls it again, five-hole between the legs of Will Gabrielson. And just like that, Hofstra regains the lead and that is something much needed for Hofstra after falling down 5-3. to three. Two goals and assists on the night for Torin Varn. Such composure around the crease. She was tiptoeing around that for a little bit. Able to fake that shot and get it low to low past Gabrielson. Seth Tierney right there on your screen. Just wants that first CAA championship since 2008. He was the coach during that as well. Saputo wins the faceoff. Tries to get it over to a Drexel attackman. But it's intercepted by Ryan Riley. Goes out of bounds on the far side, though. It'll be Drexel ball. Nice play by nice play by Ryan Riley to able to get the stick in there and to break that up. Drexel keeps the ball, but you see how important Ryan Riley is and the reason why he was named to an all CAA team. The long stick midi trying to make that play. Hofstra was down at half in the semifinal. They had a huge third quarter in that game so far. They've had three goals to one in the third quarter against Drexel. They're trying to make history repeat itself right now. Six to five, Hofstra leads after a Torin Varn go-ahead goal. Now with the ball is Jules Rauchi, excuse me, Rucci, for the Dragons. Just passing the ball around after that man-up goal from Hofstra. And now Ryan Belko with the ball. Tries to get over a crank shot, finds an open shot. It's saved by Chris Selva. So Drexel can't convert. On that, Hofstra, all they have to do is clear. And they'll have a good possession here. Finds an open man in the midfield. And now brings it over the line. That's a good clear there for Hofstra. Clear numbers, 6 for 7 for Drexel, 9 for 11 is Hofstra. Taking under eight minutes to go here in the third quarter. Brian McDonald here alongside Nick Velastro. Hofstra's up six to five in the CAA championship. And you're watching on CAA TV right now. Hofstra has scored three goals in this third quarter. Drexel with only one. Going down to the ground there was Mike Malave trying to get a shot off as well. Whistle blows. And it'll be Drexel ball. So it looks like a foul there called on Hofstra initially. A violation. And it will be Drexel ball. And they'll clear successfully. Still 6-5. to five. The big key from Seth Tierney before this game, he was telling us that they need to keep the ball away from Drexel's offense. Because they can do a lot with it. For Hofstra, a team that limits their turnovers, that's something that has been key, like you said, Brian. And so far, they've done a pretty good job at, the, at that so, so far today. There have been four ties in this game tonight with two lead changes. 
Second lead change going in favor of Hofstra. As that one shot on goal is deflected in front and Hofstra has the ball. That one right there, that's John Reichter with the ball there on your screen. And he clears it successfully. Hofstra gets the ball right back. So here we go, back and forth between the Pride and the Dragons. The ball right now is Mike Malave. And the second midfield line is up. That's Nick Altman. Check that, that's Torn Varn down low. A little over six minutes to go now. Hops are still up 6-5 after the Torn Varn man up goal. Bring it up right in front at point blank and scores. Hofstra goes up 7-5 with another goal from the captain, Torn Varn. Torn Varn there sitting on the doorstep again. And a nice move by Torn Varn as the feed goes down low to him. Look at him, fix it up high, then goes down low quickly to beat Gabrielson and Torn Varn, their senior, with that veteran experience. Give them the hat trick. And Hofstra opening it up now. It's their largest lead of the game. So much off ball movement. He's got the hat trick. And Varn doing a very good job right now in the CAA championship. Face off is still being fought for at first. Looked like it was going to be initially by Clark, but Drexel gets the ground ball. That's four goals in five minutes. There for Hofstra. Face off still in favor of Drexel, seven to six. And a Selva save once again. That one by point blank as well. That one was on Jared Boudreau. And they're going to clear right away. They're going to go for the clear right now. Zapone with a shot goes high. But Hofstra gets to the end line first anyway. They'll keep the possession. So off the clear, an attempted shot there by a short stick defensive midi. The defensive captain, Anthony Zapone. But he can't convert. Pride still with the ball though. Just when you're seeing the way Hofstra is, they're playing very smart right now. They're making Drexel work for it, making it work hard on the defensives. You saw Anthony Zapone there on the counterattack, able to, might as well fire a shot. He only has one goal in his career for Hofstra, and he just shoots it wide. But Hofstra, really in the past few minutes or so, really maintaining possession and making Drexel work for it. Trying to do a lot of their homework as the best scoring defense is facing the best scoring offense in Drexel. As that shot actually goes past the, past the goal, Goes on the ground now. Gabrielson trying to fight for it. And the Dragons will get the ball. But as we were saying, it is the best scoring offense in Drexel against the best scoring defense in Hofstra. Meeting here in the CAA Championship, the one seed versus the two seed. Ball on the ground in Hofstra's attack box. Trying to get down for it. That's Finn Sullivan with the ground ball. The sophomore, the all CAA first teamer. Selva getting over, trying to clear it. And they're able to get it successfully. That was a beautiful pass there from Hofstra to be able to clear that one. Able to toss that one all the way down. Hofstra really making, really just making it difficult for Drexel whenever the ball is on the ground. Hofstra is just the first one to it, and they're able to clear it. They made the, the huge catch there at midfield was made by the short stick defensive midi, Steve Romano, the junior. Out of Massapequa, New York. Hofstra trying to execute here. Just trying to keep the ball away from a very high-powered Drexel offense. They have the lead. It's 7-5. to five. Largest lead of the game. Less than four minutes to go here in the third quarter. Malave with the ball. Gets past his defender. Now Linares now to your four. Gets a nice dodge back to Linares. Linares tries to dodge pass, tries to get in the crease. He's still tiptoeing around it. Linares, the offensive general, leads the CAA in assists. Tries to get past Dusik, but still can't at this moment. Just trying to go for that wraparound shot was Linares. After really doing a nice job just milking down the clock right now, just making it that much harder for Drexel to try and do anything. That works into Seth Tierney's mindset of just maintain possession and work for it. And a goal scored by Hofstra. That's Varn's fourth of the game. Huge. 
And very huge game right now for the senior captain. It's 8-5. to five. Hofstra over Drexel. We will take a timeout. Hofstra's up 8-5 to five over the Dragons. 2.48 left here in the third quarter. Hofstra's had an explosive third quarter. They, the goal is 5-1 to one in favor of the Dragons. You're watching on CAA TV. Welcome back here to James M. Sheward Stadium here on the campus of Hofstra University in Hempstead, New York. Brian McDonald here alongside my color man, Nick Velastro. The Hofstra pride of taking a three-goal lead over Drexel after being down at halftime. We are back here for the ensuing faceoff. Right now, Hofstra has scored five unanswered since Drexel came out. And with their two unanswered, Torin Varn, he has a hat trick just right now alone. He has three consecutive goals. And he has really stepped up the senior in making sure Hofstra takes the CAA title. Drexel has had no goals in over 10 and a half minutes of play. Definitely huge for them. Hofstra with possession. Hofstra with possession at this moment. And Varn with the ball. He's the hero right now. He's got four goals and one assist already. Faceoff numbers, Clark's got eight, Saputo has six. That's Hofstra over Drexel, respectively. And now Malave with the ball. First midfield line is out for Hofstra. That's Malave, Kaholin, and Corey Hendrickson. Now here at X for Hofstra. That's Linares. Back over to Malave. He's second on the team in goals. And now to Lance Kapoor. Covered by Jordan Clunder. And now here at Malawi, they're just playing keep away at this moment. Making the Dragons work so much. A wraparound shot gets a save is Gabrielson. And Drexel gets the ground ball. Trying to scoop it up is Dusik. And the Dragons clear. Score right now, not favoring Drexel, but in that semifinal game against Towson, they were down 9-6 to six at one point. We were able to come back quickly and then take a 10-9 lead before it was tied up and then won it in overtime thanks to Ryan Belka. But so Drexel still can't get them out with the type of offense that they have. Towson going down in that semifinal and went down with a fight because they did have that demanding lead going into the fourth quarter, but Drexel very explosive in that fourth quarter. Big th thing for Brian Volker was that they really need to just come out right out of the gate firing. I think they've definitely done that in not just this game, but also throughout the whole season. Drexel now with the ball. Point blank shot in front, doesn't even get off. That was Cole Schaefer, and Hofstra gets the ground ball. Less than a minute left. And for Cole Schaefer there, you know, you're, you're sitting there with a nice opportunity. You're not able to handle that. Down three goals with time winding down here in the third quarter. That's something that you can't flub on. That's an opportunity that you can't have back. And that's a poor miss there from Cole Schaefer. Hendrickson now with the ball. Seven seconds left on the clock here in the third quarter. Hofstra gets over the midfield line. Three, two, one. Try to get a shot off. They're actually trying to find it over for an open Lancia Poor to get a shot, but cannot connect. But Hofstra damages Drexel in the third quarter. 5-1, to one. it goes in favor of Hofstra, but it's 8-5 to five overall. We're going to the fourth quarter. You're watching CAA TV. Tag your tweets, posts, and pictures about all the CAA championship action with the official CAA champs hashtag. After you tag it, then check out the official tag board of the CAA championships by logging on to tagboard.com backslash CAA champs. Welcome back to... James M. Stewart Stadium here in Hempstead, New York on the campus of Hofstra University. Brian McDonald here alongside Nick Velastro. Shots on goal for that period. We're in favor of Hofstra heavily, 10 to five, with six to three on shots on goal, respectively going to the pride. Face-offs right now is Nick Sabuto versus Chris Clark. And they have been in favor of Hofstra, eight to six. As the ensuing face-off for the fourth quarter, as now it is underway with Hofstra up by three. Still fighting for it on the ground. It's a yard sale. Ground ball is picked up by Riley, though. He's going to go down right there. He's going to take a shot. It goes right in front of Gabrielson. Tries to scoop it back into it. I mean, the crease at first was Riley, but no one got to it. And Drexel picks up the ground ball. They're going back in transition as well. 
going over to Schaefer. He goes for a shot, goes past Selva, goes to the end line, and it goes to Drexel. So they will keep possession in Drexel's side. Schaefer misses there, there but for Hofstra's Ryan Riley coming in hard. He fires the shot, had two goals against Delaware in the semifinal. Misses the balls on the ground, tries to shovel it in, but is not able to do that as Drexel is able to maintain possession after Riley with a nice effort. Hofstra has had a tough history before this season of giving up large leads in the fourth quarter. Let's see if they can do it right now. Belka now with the ball. Tries to spin dodge, goes past Selva and scores. Ryan Belka with the first goal of the fourth quarter. That's his first goal of the game. He cuts the deficit to two. It's Hofstra eight, Drexel six. Ryan Belka really stepped up for Drexel in their semifinal game, had the five points. And this is, you don't want this to be a possible story for Hofstra because Drexel, you, you understand, they have the capability of quickly coming back. There's still plenty of time left in this game. And Ryan Belka, you could just add more points to his season so far. That makes that 22 goals for him on the season. And just one of mul a multitude of players on this Drexel team that have over 30 points. That was their first goal in almost 15 minutes. Asaputo wins the ensuing faceoff. That's his seventh win of the game, as opposed to Chris Clark's nine for Hofstra. So Drexel with possession already. Coming out firing are the Dragons on offense. Under 14 minutes to go in this game, in the championship. Ben McIntosh with the ball, your CAA player of the year. He's got three assists, but no goals. Now right now with the ball is Nick Trezano but he gives it away. It's a turnover there for the Dragons. It goes into the stick of Anthony Zappone and clears it safely for a Hofstra possession. Now passing it around as they will change midfields. And the first midfield will come on. Hendrickson, Malave, and Koholin for the pride. Turnover numbers. Drexel has 10 as opposed to Hofstra's 5 in this game. Hops are just trying to be very smart with it and keeping it away from the Dragons. Just covering up there at first was Matt Clark, the short stick D midi. And now Malave goes over to Varn, who's at the top of the attack box. Trying to get that off ball movement, trying to get himself open again. He's got four goals on this game. And now back over here to Hendrickson. And now Yapor goes to the far side. That is Linares. Tries to get a pick set for him. He'll try to go around the crease. He'll tiptoe it a little bit as well. Standing behind there is Matt Dusick. Now tries to get a shot off. Goes, goes into the stick of Gabrielson though. That shot was made by Hendrickson from the right side. But a huge stick, stick save there by Will Gabrielson. That is his 12th on the game. And for Hofstra, it's still maintaining possession, but make making sure the offense doesn't become sluggish there. Seeing the shots on goal, Hofstra still holding that 20 to 14 lead. But for the Pride, when you are on the offensive side, you want to take off as much time as possible, but still be effective when you do have the ball in the attack box. Will Gabrielson is the reason why Drexel is in this game still right now. 12 saves for him. Drexel with the ball. They're down by two. Schaefer now for Jules Rucci. Now back at the top of the box. That's Ryan Belka. He's covered by Zappone. Now back over to Trezano now. Over to Schaefer once again. They're going around the world here. But now here is Ben McIntosh. Mishandling it there was Jules Rucci, but Drexel able to retain possession. For Hofstra, it's a matter of keeping an eye on the top point man, the CA player of the year, and Ben McIntosh, making sure he doesn't hurt you here. He still does not have a goal today. Main man that's been on Ben McIntosh has been Ryan Riley, the long stick midi. Defensive midi there for the pride. McIntosh has, hasn't gotten any goals as he just has a shot, but a save goes off a of Selva helmet but the at the end line is the dragon right there that's Nick Trezano Trezano with the ball right now dodges past his defender he tries to find anyone hoping right now a little over 10 minutes to go here gets past Jules Rucci goes out of bounds on the far side another turnover there for the dragons 
That's their 11th turnover of the game. That's just an unnecessary turnover. You're looking at both sides. Hofstra, who's a team that limits their turnovers. Drexel, you come and you want to make sure for when you know a team does not make their turnovers, it's you have to understand to limit your own turnovers. That's just a poor pass there and an unnecessary opportunity that gives Hofstra. Corey Hendrickson comes into the attack box, brings it in for them, and now going around the world for their set for themselves are the Hofstra Pride. Eight to six, the Pride lead. Big reason for that. Torin Vaughn with three goals in the second half, four goals in total. Taking under 10 minutes to go. One goal has already been scored in this fourth quarter. It's been by Drexel. And now standing idle behind the goal. That's Yapur. They're just letting him be for now. And just trying to find anyone open. Drexel feels at this time they still have plenty of time to come back, letting Hofstra try and work up their own offense. And Drexel just making sure they stick to their own man, making sure no one gets free. Nobody. Nobody touching him right now. It's back there. Right now, I believe, is Lenaris. As the white, white jerseys on white numbers are even mistaking us at the moment. It is Lance Yapur, actually. The senior. And support coming out of play now. Still not sure where to go as he still holds on to it. He's going to take it himself. Gets it over for a shot to Cajol and goes past Gabrielson. And to the end line goes Hofstra. So Hofstra there with a spin move. That is Linares. The sophomore. Covered by Houchins. Tries to get over. Dives over. Whistle blows. And the stall warning was actually in effect right there. Shot clock violation goes, can't get a shot off. And Drexel will have possession. Give credit to Drexel there, really stopping them, making sure that Hofstra really didn't have any opportunity of getting any true offense there. Drexel was thinking man-to-man, -man. got to give credit to Matt Dusick, Tyler Hodgins, Miles Thomas, all making sure that none of the Hofstra tagmen got free. Hofstra currently up 8-6 to six over Drexel. That was the score of Hofstra's semifinal game when they faced Delaware just a few days ago on Wednesday at the same stadium. Ben McIntosh with the ball right now for Drexel. He's got it in his stick. He's met by a couple of short stick middies, including Steve Romano. And now Reichter on someone as well. Inside! Now at X, Drexel tries to threaten. That's Trezano. Now back McIntosh. That's Rucci with the ball at the moment. Trezano. Going to reset things here for the Dragons. Less than eight minutes to go. Drexel still down by two. And now going up at point blank. Goes past Selva and scores. That's Ben McIntosh's first goal of the game. He was wide open. Someone might have missed an assignment for Hofstra, but either way, Drexel only down by one here. 7.37 left in this game. They're threatening late here, Nick. Really does. Nick Trezano behind at X, fades it off to the top of the key, and then right there, I don't, he's left wide open. The defense just draws away from it, and Ben McIntosh, you can't leave that guy up in front of the net for the third goal of the season, and there's a reason as to why he was a CAA Player of the Year. Ben, ben McIntosh has the most goals out of any other offensive midfielder in the country. He's also got three assists to go with that in this game. Hofstra picks up the ground ball. That one by Ryan Riley. Ryan Riley really picking that up, but as Zappon missed the ground ball opportunity there, but Riley quickly in there after to make sure that Drexel didn't pick it up. He's going to clear it himself and gives it over to Corey Hendrickson now, and Hofstra will reset. 7-11 left in this game. Hofstra only up by one now after two goals already in this fourth quarter. The recent one coming from Ben McIntosh. The other one from Ryan Belka unassisted. Hofstra just trying to settle things down, make Drexel lose that momentum, and definitely was a big part of that was Chris Clark getting that face off as well as Ryan Riley picking up that ground ball. Now it's Yapur at X. Playing a little bit closer to him, though. Goes for the wraparound shot and scores! Lance Yapur gets 
the goal. 9-7, Hofstra leads. Didn't even seem like Gabrielson even saw that one as he was screened by a defenseman in front of him. And yeah, Lance Japort here behind that X fakes the pass and then comes over here to the near side. Gabrielson really didn't have a shot there. Got fooled there. Japort able to sneak it in between the legs and a much needed goal for Lance Japort and the Hofstra Pie to make sure they keep up their two goal cushion. Japort with his second goal on the game. And that only came a little over a minute to retaliate after Drexel's goal. Face off. will be still on the ground. Trying to get to it is Riley. Whistle blows. Violation is going to be called on the Dragons. Brian Volker is very upset. He is livid on the sideline. An unnecessary turnover there for Drexel. Just when you fall down by two again, you're starting to come back. And with time winding down, that's not the thing you want to see from your own team. You're about to establish possession in the attack box, and then you have that turnover. That's just on a call for Faceoff will be credited to Chris Clark. That's his 11th. But for the turnovers, Drexel with 12. And Tofs are keeping it down to 6. Protecting that ball is huge in the game of lacrosse, especially when one of your offenses is so high-powered, you just want to keep the ball away from them. And you want to capitalize on any opportunity as soon as possible. If you're Hofstra right now, if Drexel's turning over the ball, it's, you take that. It's You understand the, the amount of offense that they do have. If they're causing their own mistakes, unforced errors, you know, you, you'll take that gladly and take as much time off as possible. Under six minutes to go, 9-7. to seven, Hofstra leads after the recent goal. It was a wraparound goal by Lance Yapor, his second of the game. Hofstra just resetting. Playing a little bit of around the world. Expect Hofstra now to take it under to five minutes now with a two-goal lead. Still plenty of time for Drexel, but that's a good sign for Hofstra to be able to hold on to this with the time winding down. Anything can happen in the sport of lacrosse. You can score in five minutes. You can score in five seconds. So this game definitely not out of reach right now for Drexel as Hofstra gets past their defender and scores. Mike Malave easily gets past their defender at the top of the attack box and scores to put the lead back up to three goals. 10 to seven, Hofstra leads with a little over five minutes to go left in the CAA championship for men's lacrosse. Coming out of the break, we will have the rest of this action. You are watching CAA TV with Hofstra up 10 to seven over the Drexel Dragons. Welcome back to James M. Sheward Stadium here on the campus of Hofstra University in Hempstead, Long Island, New York. Hofstra up 10 to seven over Drexel with five minutes left in the fourth quarter with the recent goal coming from Mike Malave. And Nick, just take us through that last goal because it seemed like Jason Clunder, the defensive captain, got burned there by Mike Malave at the top of the attack box. We've really seen a lot of impressive moves from Mike Malave today, and this time he is able to divert as Mike Malave just with a fake dodge there, but then able to beat Gabrielson down low, but Jason Clunder, the captain for Drexel, was just cool there for Malave, who's had some nice moves today, and a much-needed goal. He leads Hasho in shots today with nine, and he adds two, to, two goals with one assist, and uh, gives Hasho a three-goal lead. Saputo wins the face-off for Drexel. Definitely one that he really needed for his Dragon squad. It's coming on in the field is the first midfield. Pretty much no debate that you're going to see the first midfield from here on out for Drexel as right away they score. That's Cole Schaefer. Ben McIntosh finding Schaefer once again right in front of the goal, maybe about five feet out of Selva, but nobody it seemed was covering him at that point, Nick. And really not. Ben McIntosh able to get the nice feed and Cole Schaefer with his fourth goal on the game. Nice, nice look there from Ben McIntosh to do the head move quickly and beat it off over to Schaefer who was right in front of Selva. And it's a similar situation against Towson under four minutes. Drexel was able to tie it up and then regain the, and then take the lead. So Drexel, you still can't get them out. That's still plenty of time with 4.37 left on that clock. Schaefer, the freshman, four goals already in this game. 4.37 left in this championship game. It only took less than 30 seconds to score another goal for Drexel and answer right away. Drexel wins the ensuing faceoff once again. Four and a half minutes. This one might be coming down to the wire, folks. Schaefer with the ball in the near side alley. And now to Ben McIntosh, the CAA Player of the Year. 
That was his fourth assist of the game as he fed that one to Cole Schaefer, the attackman. Now back at expert Trezano, and now to Schaefer. Schaefer to Belka. Belka almost burns Zapone on that, but is able to pass it off. Belka once again, with a lot of pressure is Zapone. Now around the arc is Jules Rucci with a face dodge. Tries to get it past Selva, but he does, but it goes also past the goal as well. It didn't really seem like Chris Selva got a deflection on that one. Uh, Drexel still holding on and, and really trying to build some momentum here, time winding down and making sure that our offense gets plenty of chances to tie this game. Trezano is hounded by two Hofstra defensemen, those being Finn Sullivan and Zapone as well. Drexel keeps possession though. Trying to get past Reichter. Is Belka. He's able to get a Taj right past him. Goes for the shot. Goes past Selva. Back at the end line, though, is Trezano once again. Still a very high powered shot. Very fast shot there by Belka. Belka went low to high there. And getting the shot right there is Nick Trezano. Goes for the wraparound shot. Goes low to low there. Past Selva. Drexel only down by one. 3.15 left in this game. Hofstra still leads by one, but it's getting close here, Nick. Yeah, really, if you thought Drexel was done in this one with a 10 to 7 lead with not that much time remaining, that's your fault for that. Nick, Nick Trezano there, able to keep off and leaves at home there and able to fire the low to low shot. Excuse me, that was, Steve, that was uh, Finn Sullivan that he beat there. So Nick Trezano gets his hat trick and it's back to a one goal game. Two goals in less than 90 seconds for the Drexel Dragons. And Saputo wins another faceoff. Three straight faceoffs there for Nick Saputo. A little over three minutes left, but Drexel with possession. High powered offense is working right now with Hofstra up 10 to 9 here in the 2014 CAA Men's Lacrosse Championship that you're watching on CAA TV. Brian McDonald here alongside Nick Velastro. Ryan Belka goes in once again. Gets right past his defender, goes for a shot past Selva, and scores! Ryan Belka ties this game up at 10. 2.45 left in this game. Going for a timeout is coach Seth Tierney. Needing to talk over and see what's going on with the momentum for the Pride. Yeah, right now, all the momentum is lost for Hofstra. Drexel has just come back and taken all that momentum. Ryan Belka, he had the game winner against Townsend in overtime. You see him coming here on, in the inside. He beats the pawn, and then back with the spin dodge, beats the pawn again, and then goes low on Chris Selva to beat him. Ties his game, 2.45 remaining. Huge spin dodge there that kind of fakes out Zapone big time, as you're seeing right now. Is able to get that shot right past Selva. That's Belka's second of the game. Three goals in less than two minutes there for the Drexel Dragons. That goes to your point that you could score, you got to have goals in five minutes or you can have them in five seconds. Not really. You just understand how quickly this Drexel team can just respond there. And looking at that replay just before, Anthony Zappone on the spin. He gets fake there, slips there, and it's for Hadre. It's a matter of regrouping and coming and winning this faceoff. Nick Zaputo won the last three, and you understand why he's the top faceoff, one of the top faceoff men in the country and top in the CAA. So for Chris Clark, the freshman, going up against Nick Zaputo, it is absolutely incredible. Uh, fans just absolutely going and enjoying this one right now. It's a phenomenal game. 10-10 and we still have plenty of time remaining for some special for special things to happen. Coming out of the timeout for Hofstra and now the faceoff at, at a 10-10 game. A huge faceoff. We'll see who wins it right here. Still on the ground. Whistle blows. Violation going to be called on Drexel. Hofstra with possession and that's a huge faceoff to have a violation on there right then and there. Violation. Look like that. We'll see what happens here. But Hofstra 12 10 in favor of Drexel. Been very close all game. And now the first midfield line here for Hofstra. Hofstra really hasn't had possession in a while. Can they muster up something on offense, maintain possession, try and milk the clock, and wait for the perfect opportunity to strike? They bring it in. A little bit more of a fast pace here to this Hofstra offense. As opposed to earlier in the fourth quarter when they were kind of stalling a little bit. Yapor tries to go for the spin dodge, tries to find a shot, but go is really stopped by Dusik at that point, the All-CAA first team defenseman. Now here it's Hendrickson. Trying to find a shot. Tries to get past the defender. 
but cannot get a shot off once again. 138 left in this game, or at least in regulation, with the score 10 to 10. Corey Hendrickson once again from the right arc. And now going over here, we let's get poor again. Here at X, 119 left. Keeping it at the same point, it's Yapor at X. Again, the offense freezing Drexel, making sure no man gets open. Off ball movement is huge right now for Hofstra, especially for someone like Torin Varn, who thrives on that. There is an automatic bid on the line here to get to the NCAA tournament as we take under a minute to go. Stall Yapor, warning in effect. Stall warning still here with 48 seconds. He goes past X, goes for a shot, goes past Gabrielson, whistle might have blown, but actually gets the save. Huge save there by Gabrielson. Waving off that goal there, trying, trying to get some clarification on that one, but how a, just a tough break for Hofstra as Gretzen now with 30 seconds remaining. Timeout is called. Heard the whistle blow. It seemed like it went past Gabrielson. It definitely did, definitely did see the net move at that point. But definitely the whistle blew at that, so there was a no goal. Let's look at the replay. Yapor gets past. Something might have happened. There could have been a crease violation that happened in front. Someone might have went through the crease. Might have been a Hofstra attackman. Let's double check this again. Might have been Linares. Checking from a different angle. It's coming around still. Not really, sh not really sure from that angle if you could see if it was a crease violation. See what the ref is looking at here. Yes. So the ref called up there a violation on Hofstra. Gabrielson. Either way, Drexel with possession. 10-10, 31 seconds left in regulation. Huge spot for both teams. It's going to come down to this. Highest powered offense in the CAA against the high powered defense of the CAA. You really can't make a better storyline. Just these two coaches, Brian Vogel and Seth Tierney, who all know, who all know each other. Right now, you look for this one, it has to be Ben Mac, it has to be McIntosh, he is, their, he is their best player. He is the CA player of the year. You have plenty of other options, but obviously you have to look for the best player in the conference right now in Ben McIntosh. And also you look at Ryan Belka. He had the OT winner against Towson, but definitely Ben McIntosh. He's got one goal on the game. Belka with two. Schaefer and Trezano, four and three respectively. 19 seconds left on the clock. Belka with the ball. Tries to bring it in. Goes to the top of the arc. That's Rucci. Now on the right side. That is McIntosh. He's covered by Reichiter, it seems. Now at X is Trezano. Get, trying to get past Reichiter. Find someone in front. That's Jules Rucci. Gets on the ground. Regulation ends. Time expires. We're going to overtime. It's 10-10. Wow. wow. All I could just say is, wow, what, what game we've seen so far. And this has just been impressive. 10-10. When we come back, we will have overtime action for you here from Hempstead, New York. You're watching the CAA Men's Lacrosse Championship on CAA TV. Welcome back to Seward Stadium here on the campus of Hofstra University. Hofstra 10, Drexel 10, Brian McDonald alongside Nick Velastro. We're here in overtime and the ensuing faceoff going between Clark and Saputo. These two men in 2008, Tom Julie won it for Hofstra just 11 seconds in, just coming off the faceoff. Similar situation, there's going to be some dramatic stuff going on right now. Whistle blows, face-off violation, looks like someone held a wrist there, but it will be Hofstra possession. Less than four minutes on the clock, 3.45, timeout immediately called by Hofstra. Trying to set something up just to end this one right here and right now here, Nick. Absolutely, and right now... Just looking at, we're going to look at that. Illegal pick that was shown is Lance Yapori C right there at the top of the screen trying to get a read on that number. Looks like that might have been Torn Varn or Mike Malave. It looks like it looks like the referee is correct there. You know, moving pick. Uh, tough break for Hasha, but right now they do hold possession. 345 here in overtime. Obviously, it's sudden death. First goal wins it for Hasha. Actually for Drexel for that matter. 
face off violation. It's had been a problem. That gave Hofstra possession here to begin overtime. Now Hofstra holds the advantage and the opportunity to win the CAA title. Absolutely. I completely agree with you, Nick. And sometimes that just kills you, especially with someone like Nick Saputo, who's top five in the nation in face off percentage. But yeah, that definitely. That illegal pick that happened just in front of the crease. Ref was right all over that during that Lanchaport goal that was disallowed. But now a huge spot for head coach Brian Volker for Drexel and head coach Seth Tierney for Hofstra. Hofstra will have possession after a face-off violation. Timeout was called. If you're looking... If you're looking for a Hofstra right now, you either go to Torn Varn, four goals, one assist, or Mike Malavi. He's had some impressive individual efforts so far with two goals and assists. I go to one of those two. Looks like Lenaris will start with it on the far side in the alley. Now over to Malave. Malave now, back over to Lenaris. That's Yopor now with the ball. Over here, that's Corey Hendrickson on the near side. Pick is set, illegal pick that is. Gets out of the stick of Yapor though, and there's a cost turnover. That one, it seems, by Miles Thomas. They clear. Drexel gets calls, calls timeout. 3-10 left in overtime right now. But either way, it's sudden death here, Nick. And that was definitely a tough turnover there, a very good cost turnover there by Miles Thomas. Miles Thomas gets his first cost turnover of the game. That'll be his 17th of the season. And just impressive work. Hofstra working in Drexel's zone in their attack box. And Miles Thomas just stepping up big. The sophomore from Devin PA, he's able to really step up and give Drexel the opportunity now to win it. So Hofstra loses possession. But now let's look a little bit how Drexel got here. They score five goals in the fourth quarter. As you're seeing right now, Cole Schaefer, a big part of that. He's got four goals on the game. That one came from Ben McIntosh. McIntosh also has been huge too. He's been distributing the ball very well. Now here's Trezano with that wraparound low to low. And all parts of Drexel's offense really being a big part of this effort. Absolutely. And I see this last one by Ryan Belko who had the game winner back against Towson. And you mentioned the name in Ben McIntosh. He's been the distributor today, known for his clinical finishing and being the goal scorer. But right now he's doing it on the other side of the sheet. Only has one goal, but those four says has been huge for Drexel right now. Drexel going around the world to start this off. Taking on the three minutes to go left in this overtime. But once again, once a goal is scored, the game is over. A championship game is over. The title will be crowned for either Drexel or Hofstra. The game in 2008 between Hofstra and Drexel also went into overtime. That one was won by Hofstra. Could it be Drexel's turn right here and right now? Trezano is at X. He's going to be covered by Ryan Riley. Tries to stick to him like Lou. Now at the back, at the top of the arc is Belka. He'll go, looked like he was going to go for a crank shot right there. Gets past his defender, goes for a shot. It's deflected out of the way by Hofstra. Taking that is the sophomore Finn Sullivan, the all-CAA first-teamer for the Pride. Reichardt now with the ball on the far side. He's going to try to clear. He will and go over to Hofstra's side in that attack box. He's at the far alley. Impressive work by Finn Sullivan, making sure that Ryan Belka did not get an opportunity to get an open look at the cage. Malave passes it over. Both teams already have used their timeout in overtime. With the ball now is Sam Linares. He's going to go over to the far alley and try to set something up, trying to find anyone that's open. The first midfield line is out. Back over to Linares. He runs, tries to get over the top of the crease, maybe might go for a wraparound shot. He's covered like glue right now, though, by Tyler Houchins. Might throw for a wraparound shot again. Goes off the stick, it seemed, to Gabrielson. But now over to a midfielder at Hofstra. Picking up the ground ball is the pride, though. That is Corey Hendrickson. That was a big ground big ball ground there ball by Corey Hendrickson. A dangerous pass across all the way to the top of the box. As Lenoris just missed from a too sharp of an angle there to try and put it home. Both teams are 2-1 and one in overtime this season. Now with the ball, losing it. Looks like that's Lance Yipor. He's able to get it back, though. Lance Yipor being it's on the ground right again. Now. Still tripping over, just hacking at him right now. That is Houchins as well. Coach, Coach Tierney wanted to call there. I thought that the got tripped there. 
but still able to hold on to it. Definitely a tough place to call something like that. Now here is Hendrickson. He's going to try to bring it himself. Defender slips and falls, but gets right back up to cover Hendrickson. Malave now. 35 seconds left in overtime. Goes for the shot. Goes past Gabrielson. Getting to the end line first is Hofstra. Malave wishing he had that one back. He looks up to the sky as he fires this one down low. Excuse me. Drew Koholin firing the shot there. Trying to get it right away. That looks like a Norris at that point. Norris with the ball. 20 seconds left in this overtime. Bringing it back out. And it looks like the final shot will go to Hofstra. That's Mike Malave with the ball. He's covered by Klunder. Goes for a shot. Goes back to Gabrielson again. Eight seconds left. Hofstra gets possession again. Don't have time for one play here. Clock will, re will start again. Five seconds left. Trying to get that shot off. That's Yapor. Goes for the shot from long range. Doesn't even get to Gabrielson. And that will be the end of the first overtime. We will go to a second one. Still sudden death. Hofstra 10, Drexel 10. It will be another four-minute segment. And we'll be back for second overtime action right here on CAA TV from here in Hempstead, New York, between Drexel and Hofstra. Championship, including semifinal game recaps, results, and highlights. Log on to caasports.com and caa.tv. 10 to 10 in the second overtime. Nick Saputo and Chris Clark are here for the face-off. And it's definitely a huge one at this point because the first goal is the winner of the CAA title. Also clinches that NCAA berth as Chris Clark and Nick Saputo have to go after it. Clark gets it. Bringing it over at first. That is Linares over on the far side. Hofstra calls timeout right when they get possession. A huge face-off for Chris Clark. That's his 14th of the game as opposed to Saputo's 10. Impressive work from Chris Clark, the freshman from Belmore, New York. And we're going to take a look at the faceoff here right now. Seeing between Zaputo and Clark. There have been a lot of clean ones, but I think that was a very nice one Ball there by Chris out. Clark. And he just won that one clean. Nice job there from Chris Clark. Man from Chaminade. And for Hofstra right now at this point, it's not a matter of one individual trying to beat the hero here win over time. It's still work with what you have. Keep it around the edges. Keep it on the outside. If you see an opportunity, take it. But don't try and do an unnecessary individual effort when it's not there. We're in double overtime here in Hempstead. 10-10, Hofstra and Drexel are tied. Everyone on their feet here, both Hofstra fans and Drexel fans. Definitely a huge one here at Sheward Stadium. At this point, there's really no reason to sit down. Next goal wins it and wins the CEA title. It's so much on the line as there's so much anxiety and joy right now between the fans, players alike. Yep. So much riding on this. Fans, students, parents, everyone looking at this game right now. That's Gabrielson right there. He's in a huge spot at the moment. He's got 12 saves on the game, 10 goals against as opposed to nine saves for Chris Selva with 10 goals against as well. And despite the question though is who could it possibly be that takes this shot? And you, you have Sam Linares. He's the man that also distributes it, but he also has the ability to finish Torin Varn, right. who has four goal, one assist. Mike Mlave has had some nice moves of his own. Juka Holland, who had five goals against his team earlier this season, has a goal and an assist. There's plenty of options for Hoshua to go with here. Yapor will start with it on the far side and give it over to Koholin. Now Malave. Malave covered by Jason Klunder. Trying to find anything. Malave was actually the, he had the OT winner against Cornell earlier this season. Definitely was a big spot for him as well. Koholin with the ball right now though. Still Malave. Bringing it back out. Still covered by the defensive captain. Tries to find a spot. Keeps the ball. Goes down on the ground, though. Trying to get to it as Yapor before it goes out of bounds. He's able to get to it. Nice work by Yapor. Don't want that one to be a turnover. He directs the ball. Varn now. Giving it over. Looks like that was Linares at that point trying to go for a shot but Drexel is able to cause the turnover. Miles Thomas again coming up big here in overtime, making sure the turnover is caused to give Drexel the ball now. Definitely huge, just need to clear at this moment, trying to get into the attack box. And they do. Whistle blows, Drexel will call timeout. And it just seems like deja vu. Hofstra won the face up in the first OT. They won in the second OT again. But first overall, let's see what happened just there on Hofstra's possession see what happened at that point. Looked like it was Linares trying to crank one. Didn't, decided to fake for it. 
Yeah, faking for that one, Lenores kind of pulls it back and kind of goes into Miles Thomas there, causing the ball to be coughed out of his stick there. So for Lenores right now, he must be kicking himself right now. Still have to defend here, but Miles Thomas, again, coming up big for Drexel when they needed to here in overtime, making sure that Hasha doesn't win the CA title. Now, let's see what can Drexel do with all their offensive firepower. So much chaos in this game, and it's led to this point. Brian McDonald here alongside Nick Velastro on CAA TV. 2.48 left in this double overtime slot here. Hofstra 10, Drexel 10. Drexel will have possession inside the attack box. Gabrielson has had a huge game for the Dragons. Didn't have to make a save in the second overtime though at that point. Selva though now in the spot right now. Just looking at the options that Drexel does have. Ben McIntosh, their best player. One goal, four assists. Cole Schaefer, the freshman. He has four goals today. One of them, an absolute behind-the-back beauty. Nick Trezano, the all-CA first team, also an option. Jared Boudreau, Ryan Belko. All these players have over 30 points, so they've, acute, they've had so much opportunities for Drexel. They have so much offensive firepower. You expect that they could go with either one of them. So we'll see what happens here with Drexel. Ball is in the hands of the ref. And they will first go with Cole Schaefer, the freshman. Schaefer brings it to X to Trezano. Now to Boudreau. Back over out to Jules Rucci, as obviously the first midfield is out here. Now Belka, covered by Reikiter. Back over to Belka. He's near the alley. 2.28 left in this double overtime slot. Now at X is Belka. No one else around with him. As far as Drexel off it. Attackmen go. Belka trying to find a way past Reikater. Tries to find someone in front. That's right there. Boudreau tries to go for a shot. Does, decides not to take it. Now on the left side. Here's Jules Rucci. Back to Boudreau. Trying to go, just going around the world once again. Less than two minutes here. Just holding on to the ball at this moment, trying to find any opening. They find an open man right there. Goes past Selva, but it doesn't go in the net. Selva gets the ground ball. Everyone on Drexel thought they had it as the net did move. It hit the side of the net, though, the left side. And Hofstra still has possession. Reikiter has the ball. Drexel thought they had it. Everyone on the bench was on the field at that point. Malave now with the ball. No timeouts for either team. Check that. That's the captain, Torin Varn, at the top. Even of the, the attack box. Even there, I got fooled from the, from the angle right and hit the side net, and you see the Drexel players run out. You think game over. You see the wet ref waving it off. The ball just hit the side net. Uh, Drexel, just a premature celebration there. And they could, it, there could have been a situation where they could have had too many people on the field, but obviously, the ref's laying back on that one considering the circumstances. But still, Mike Malave with the ball right now, brings it into the attack box. Goes over now One to Linares. Now here at the top of the arc. That's your pork. Goes past Gabrielson. But at the end line there, that's Lance Poor actually. And the clock will start again. Less than a minute here. Yapor has the ball for the pride. Goes for a shot in front. It's saved by Gabrielson. Big stop there from Gabrielson. Able to hug the near post here and able to close his legs to make sure that that one doesn't go home and end this game. Huge stop there from Will Gabrielson. 13 save for him. That shot was by Druka Holen. 30 seconds left in the double overtime slot. Drexel has cleared successfully, and they will try to get one shot here. And now Jared Boudreau with the ball to Jules Rucci. Now here at the top is Ryan Belka. Belka gets past a defender, trying to get it behind him was a pawn. And now Rucci again, tries to get that shot, can't even get one at all. Going down for that ground ball still. Hoss is able to get it, three seconds left, trying to get any shot off, that's Romano taking it. Doesn't even get on the cage. Now will be the end of the second overtime here at Seward Stadium. It's still Hofstra 10, Drexel 10. And still looking just at, let's first look at the Drexel goal before we go to break. Still overall, that shot looks like it was taken at first. Trying to see who that was by. Hit the left side of the net. That was by Ryan Belka. 
But still, we'll have more trip we'll have triple overtime action CAA while you are on the move by downloading the league's apps available for iPhone, Android, and iPad in your respective app store. Each app features all the news from around the league, including, including stats, standings, scores, and more. Back here at Stewart Stadium, we're in triple overtime here in Hempstead, New York. Hofstra 10, Drexel 10 in the CAA Championship. Winner gets an automatic berth to the NCAA Tournament. A lot on the line here with not a lot of at-large slots for either team in the NCAA Tournament. It is won by Nick Saputo. He's going down the middle right now. Find someone right away, but it's stolen away by Ryan Riley. So, looked like Drexel had something going, then right away, on the near side though, whistle blows, Riley steps out of bounds, it stays Drexel ball though. Ryan Riley makes a nice play there as Drexel coming in hot after the face of looking to get an opportunity, Ryan Riley's able to get the, able to get the turnover there, but coming here on the near side, steps out of bounds here, near this center line, and the ball will be back with Drexel with the opportunity to win the CAA. Jules Rucci with the ball right now. A tough, tough turnover there for Ryan Riley from Hofstra. But Drexel with the ball right now, threatening. Less than four minutes to go here in the triple overtime. Now here is Cole Schaefer and scores. Cole Schaefer, his fifth goal of the game, wins it for Drexel. They win the CAA championship. They're going to the NCAA tournament with an 11-10 win over the Hofstra Pride. Everyone is just going crazy over there on Cole Schaefer. 11-10, Drexel beats Hofstra. And they will be going to the NCAA tournament. Just impressive work there from Cole Schaefer. His fifth goal on the game, the freshman. And you just see how impressive he is, a CAA rookie, able to fire that one over the left shoulder of Chris Selva, beat him there in the top post. And for Drexel Dragons, they win their first CAA title. And just really impressive work. We get the replay here. That's behind at X. And Cole Schaefer able to just fire that one. Gets the pass from Jules Rucci. Comes here to the near side, just lays it off. Low to high. You can see near a crank shot there. And just impressive work for the freshman. Truly the player of the game with five goals to win the title for the Drexel Dragons. So Hofstra wins, 11, or Drexel wins, excuse me, 11 to 10 in triple overtime. And the, the hero of this game, Cole Schaefer, five goals on eight shots. And that overtime winner getting right past Chris Silva on the left side of him overall. So we'll be back with more post-game coverage here on CAA TV as Drexel beats Hofstra in triple overtime for the CAA championship. They get the automatic berth in the NCAA tournament. You're watching this coverage on CAA TV. Three goal lead going into the fourth quarter. They were up 10 to seven. Excuse me, nine to six. But either way, they were able to do, or Drexel was able to come back and win. Ryan Belka makes the all-tournament team for Drexel. He had a very good game, including the game tire. From Drexel University, Nick Trezano. Nick Trezano, the attackman. The all-CAA first teamer, 5'10 senior from East Chester, New York. Somewhat of a local, he makes the all-tournament team as well. He has a hat trick in this game. Cole Schaefer with a huge game for the Drexel Dragons. Five goals on eight shots. Only a rookie as well from British Columbia, Canada. So the CAA Player of the Year also wins the most outstanding player in the CAA tournament. That's Ben McIntosh. You might not have seen it from him scoring goals, especially in this game. He had four goals and one assist in the semifinal against Towson just a couple days ago. But today, you switch it around. He had one goal on four assists. It's definitely a huge honor for him. And Drexel is going to be going to the NCAA tournament because of those four guys right there. But you also got to credit the defense as well. Matt Dusick, Tyler Houchins, and Miles Thomas. Huge on defense as well. Coming up to the accept the award as well. That's Jason Clunder with 
with Ben McIntosh as well as head coach Brian Volker holding the CAA Men's Lacrosse Champion Trophy. The two captains, McIntosh and Clunder, as Clunder holds it up and all of his team swarms him. You can just take that picture right now. Photo op right there. Everyone just so excited that they're going to their first NCAA tournament in program history. That's the Drexel Dragons right there, folks. They have earned this. As the second seed comes into Hofstra, and they shock the Hofstra Pride. As the Pride start to go back to their locker room. And they could possibly be changing in their locker rooms for the final time. We'll be back with more post-game coverage here on CAA TV. Welcome back to James M. Stewart Stadium as you see the champions of the Colonial Athletic Association in the sport of men's lacrosse. Those are the Drexel Dragons, their first CAA title in program history. Drexel wins 11-10 in triple overtime thanks to Cole Schaefer. Five goals for him as well, but still a huge from him and a big game also as well from Ben McIntosh. One goal and four assists as well. But now standing by down on the field is my color man, Nick Velastro. He's with the head coach of the Drexel Dragons, Brian Volker. Nick? Talking with the head coach, coaches, initial reactions to this incredible game. Uh, I mean, it was a crazy, crazy game. Um, give a lot of credit to Hofstra. They played great, um, but obviously feels great. You know, our guys are super excited. Um, Drexel's never been in the NCAA tournament. We've never won this thing, and, and uh, this group's worked really hard to get to, get to this point. So I'm, I'm obviously real happy. Uh, you know, Seth Tierney, Vernon, what did you say to them after the game? Uh, I said, I hope they get in the NCAA tournament. They're a great team. Uh, they play hard, and uh, I hope they get in. They deserve it. Now, what's something about this team that a lot of the country may not know about? Uh, number one offense here in the CA. What, what is it about this team? Uh, you know, it's, a, it's just a good group. And, and like I said, we've had our sights set on this thing for a while. And these guys have just worked real hard to, to get this thing done. Um, and, and obviously, you know, feeling pretty good about it right now. And then in overtime, Cole Schaefer, five goals on the game, gets the game winner. Just talk about his work only as a freshman. Yeah, I mean, he's had an incredible year. And we, we you know, we knew coming into the year that he could be a really good player for us. Uh, and he's, he's exceeded all those expectations and, uh, you know, had an awesome game, had an awesome tournament. And uh, hopefully he's got some more work to do here coming up in the NCAAs. Coach, congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm talking with Cole Schaefer. Cole, just talk about what it was like in overtime. You know, it's triple overtime. You want to win it already. Just go through that play. Uh, you know, I just, uh, Jules just gave me a great pass, and I just thought I had the opportunity, and I just shot it off stick, and uh, it just happened to go in. So, uh, Just beside that, you also had five goals today. Just talk about wh what was it like today? You just, you just seemed like you were on point so far. Uh, yeah, you know, the guys did a great job at drawing doubles, and uh, I was open, and they just found me, and I just uh, had to place it in the net. So, you know, they, they did a great job, and I'm proud of my team. How does it feel to be going to the NCAA tournament? feels great. You know, I'm proud of the seniors, uh, Ben McIntosh and everyone. Uh, this is crazy. It's surreal. I can't believe it. It's happening. It's just it's unbelievable. All right, Cole, go celebrate. Thank you. Right, guys, back to you. All right, thank you very much, Nick. So that right there, head coach Brian Volker, and as well as the hero of tonight's win, Cole Schaefer, as Drexel wins 11-10, just a little over a minute into the triple yeah. overtime, he gets that goal, and that one comes from Jules Rucci. So, for everyone behind the scenes helping out with this production, and for my color man, Nick Velastro, my name is Brian MacDonald. The Drexel Dragons win their first CAA title in tournament history, and they're going, they're in program history, and now they're going to their first ever NCAA tournament. My name is Brian MacDonald. Everyone, have a very good evening.